my joy uh, to welcome you to, to worship this morning as we uh, gather at, at the close of summer for the first Sunday uh, of September. Um, Brother Russell is away for uh, vacation, and so I'm trying to fill in today. Uh, be patient with me as I try to keep up with all that's happening uh, in the life of the church. Just to share a couple uh, of announcements as we start our time together um, this morning. The first of those is to invite everyone uh, for Wednesday night fellowship and Wednesday night alive. Our spirit suppers start back this week in the fellowship hall at 6 o'clock. Um, and then we'll have programs for all ages, uh, children and youth and adult Bible studies at 6.30. Um, so we want, to, again, to invite everybody to come. This week we're having uh, a kind of a fiesta. We're going to have nachos. The, some of the ladies are, are serving nachos on Wednesday night. So again, we want to invite you to come. Uh, come early if you'd like and kick your feet up for a minute. Uh, have some sweet tea and, and enjoy the presence of Jesus with your neighbors. And, and join us for dinner and, and for discipleship on Wednesday night. Uh, a couple other thoughts. Tomorrow being Labor Day, the church offices will be closed. Um, we'll have the phones uh, monitored and forwarded though should you have a need or an emergency uh, to, to give us a call but the offices uh, will be closed tomorrow and then open back up at, at 8 30 on Tuesday. So a happy Labor Day to all. I know we may have a number uh, this week that are away at the lake or camping or, or that sort of thing. To those that are that are joining us online, uh, that are that are in the stream this morning or throughout the week, we we welcome your presence as well. Um, later in the service, when we share in, in joys and concerns, we, we invite you to, to comment, to lift up joys and concerns as, as part of the, the stream and our virtual worship. Uh, if there are, are uh, needs that you have to share that are confidential, we invite you just to DM us, direct messages, and, and we'll see to, to pray with you and to pray for you uh, with that need. This week, uh, as the new month came, the church has sent out the monthly newsletter. Uh, if you would like a hard copy, I know there are some uh, in, in the Narthex as well as in uh, some of the Sunday school classes. Uh, if you are not getting one in the post mail, snail mail, and would like to, just let us know in the office and we'll be glad uh, to mail you a hard copy uh, to, that you can keep up with all the things happening uh, in the life of the church. Uh, among those are birthdays and anniversaries but we'll share some of those um, during our time of joys uh, and concerns. Ask if you will now just to bow your heads uh, as we open our hearts uh, to this hour of worship together. God, we give you thanks for the gift of this day, and, and God, we thank you for, for the gift uh, uh, and the opportunity uh, of our labor, uh, of the things that we do and, and the work that, that we give to put uh, bread on the table and, and keep a roof over our heads. We thank you for the work and, and the labor of so many of our neighbors, from, from frontline workers and, and school teachers and faculty and staff, uh, to, to all of our neighbors uh, for, the, for the services and the good uh, that is done through working uh, together in our community. And God, as we pause on, on this Sunday morning from, from the busyness of our lives, as we gather together here and, and other places, as we pause in the midst of our week uh, to worship and to lift up the name of Jesus, we ask that your Spirit would come. God, that you would touch the hearts of each person gathered here, that, that you would touch the hearts of, of all those who worship with us uh, uh, on the stream and throughout the week. That each person, uh, each man, each woman, each child would receive just exactly what you desire to give. Uh, that all would be strengthened and encouraged. God, that, that we would free ourselves of concerns. And God, that we would share our, our joy in the worship of you. That we would grow uh, to know your word and, and to love your word. And to love our neighbors as ourselves. And so we ask that you would bless us and anoint us and sanctify us in this hour. That you would continue to transform our lives in this church and this community. Uh, for your glory we pray. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Let us join together in worship. Let us stand together on your feet as you may be able. <clears throat> and 
And we'll start this morning with Bind Us Together.
And those chimes are awesome. Who was doing that? Was that Roger? I kept looking around for the guy with the chimes. I want to invite our, our children uh, to, to come forward uh, as Miss Kathy shares a message for today. Uh, if, if you're watching on the stream, uh, you know, grab the phone from, from mom or dad or me, mom, peepaw. It's your turn, kids, if you're uh, watching on the stream. Uh, as Mr. Russell says, don't be afraid to get close to the TV. It really won't make you go blind after all. Uh, but let's come forward and, and join in in a message for, for our youngest disciples. Uh, and I'm sure it's always a message for us all. Good morning. How are you guys today? Good? Well, I've brought, well, first of all, I have this little thing that I've never used before. No, and that's something that makes me really loud. Y'all like a microphone? They're sort of fun, aren't they? You use your hairbrush sometimes? Yeah, to sing. So this is, this is sort of new for me. So I brought, I brought something else, and y'all know what this is, right? It's the globe and it's the world, and something fun this one can do. And so I wonder if God's like, hello, everybody. <laughs> you think so? Maybe. So, you know what? We can pass that around. You can feel it. So we've got the world. So, Corey, your turn. It's Henry, right? No? Yeah? Okay. I was like, I thought so. Corey, pass it to Henry. Everybody pass it around. And then Kenley and David. It's the world. You've got the world in your hands. Did you know? You do. That's awesome. We'll pass it to David because we got to get it over here to get everybody. So you have the whole world in your hands. See there? And there's a song. Do you remember, Kate? Well, he hadn't done it in a long time, but it's, He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. A lot of people know that look me, baby. In his hands, he's got you and me, sister. In his hands, he's got you and me, brothers. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. Isn't that cool? Isn't that so cool? So, God, right now there are people all over these places that are praying to God or that God is praying for them. Did you know that? And there's not anybody that you'll meet that God doesn't care for, just like he cares for you and me. All over the whole world. Isn't that pretty cool? And that we are just, it's, we sung the song, we are one, and we are one. Mm -hmm. That he loves every one of us. And so sometimes, you know, you, you meet people that sort of make you mad, sort of make you angry, but God still loves them. And we can pray for them. And when we pray all together as a unity, as one body, he listens. He listens to us all. And sometimes you might be by yourself and you might be scared or something's bothering you. And you can pray and he'll listen to every one of y'all. Even you, Henry, in Hot Springs. <laughs> so I have a, I have a uh, and I may not be able to get this on there right now. I'll just take it like that. So I have a prayer for us all to take. There we go. And I know you readers may not read all that, but there's a big, some big letters. Here you go, Henry. Oh, I'm going to give you a fox because you look pretty foxy. Here you go. So uh, this is our prayer. So. I'm a dog keeper. I, oh, man. My house, I got a house. It's a archer house, and I take care of animals. My mom is that dog. is awesome. And that is a good job to do, take care of animals, isn't it? So on our on our prayer, this is our prayer today, but we can read it. So on you, the non-readers, Corey, who goes, Holly, you can read, can't you? You see one O N E. So here's our prayer. It said, and y'all, the readers, y'all help me. God, God, help us to love one another just like you do, and thank you for making our one awesome, incredible world. Help us to be the one in Christ, in your name we pray. Amen. And I think I have enough for y'all to, well, let me take one to Mason and I'm going to take one to Mason and Sawyer. All right, y'all have a great week. And remember, you are one of the whole world that God prays to. That's for you to keep. You can pray that tonight. All right. Thank you guys. Oh.
Man, and let the church say amen. Thank you, Miss Kathy. Uh, we take a moment uh, in worship uh, to, to lift up some of the joys and the concerns uh, of our lives, of our church and community and the world. Uh, this week we celebrate with some families uh, an anniversary for, for Dick and Susan Bondurant, an anniversary for, for the Canes, happy anniversary uh, to, to Jim uh, Jr. and to Barbara, uh, an anniversary for Stan and Deb Grimmett, um, birthdays for, for Margaret Bagley, for Tony Blackford, for Dr. Austin hurt, so some of the birthdays uh, and anniversaries uh, that, that we lift this week. Um, we also, of course, uh, lift, lift concerns as well. But, but I invite you, what joys uh, do you have to lift uh, for each other this morning? Yes, ma'am. All right, there's one for the Razorbacks. I noticed today there's more red and less black. Um, that's right, for, for the Razorbacks. Um, Okay, there's a shout out to the Morals and Devil Dogs uh, for, for their win. Um, uh, other joys that you want to lift this morning? Surely there's some beyond football, y'all. I mean, and I, I love that as much as anybody else. What other joys do you have to lift this morning? Fourteen. Okay. Okay. A, a word of the joy of the progress and an update on the work of Habitat. Um, Kathy was talking about the lady serving a meal to the workers on Thursday, uh, and a reminder that that the apostles build uh, that that churches, including ours, uh, support through our prayers and through our service and through our giving, uh, starts with the groundbreaking on September the 14th. I know our kiddos are are filling the little M and M canisters, and in fact, I forgot to bring ours today uh, and trade it in for another. But uh, if you uh, want one after the service, see see Miss Kathy. Uh, for, for one of the little M&M's. You get to eat the M&M's first. Uh, and, and then the goal is to, to fill it with some quarters to help uh, build houses for our neighbors. Other joys, uh, other good news to share with, with each other this morning. Come on now, I know that it's a troubled world. Uh, but even when the world's at its worst, uh, we can be at our best. Uh, other... other okay, there's a shout out for, for deer season. And, and a warning uh, I learned a couple times, Joel sent me up the ladder a couple summers ago, when you're getting ready for deer season is a good time to be watching for wasps. Uh, when you climb up into a stand you hain't been in, sometimes the wasps have been uh, spending their summer vacation there. Uh, so take the spray up the ladder with you. It's easier to, to do that than to jump off a ladder, uh, in my experience. <laughs> Uh, other, other joys, though, to, to share with each other. Is anybody looking forward to having tomorrow off? Surely there's one person. Surely there's one. Surely there's one person in, in, in all of the kingdom of heaven that, that might be thankful tomorrow to do whatever you want to do. Drink the coffee, you know, whatever it is. Water the grass, right? It's, it's your freedom day to, tomorrow, a, a day to rest. Yes, ma'am. The county fair starts Tuesday. The county fair is fixing to start up. You'll be able to, to get on the funnel cakes and the lemonade and all of those things. That's right. Uh, other joys that you want to share. Come on now. We won't get out on time if we don't get on with it. What, what other joys do you have to share? There's got to be more. All right, prayer uh, of joy for the improvement of health for Lynn Penn. Uh, she's now started a physical therapy, so a lot of progress o over a number of weeks. Uh, other joys that you want to lift? A couple of more. Surely you can think of something good. Yes, ma'am. All right, got a birthday right around the corner. Uh, others. One more. Come on now. One more thing to be joyful for. There's got to be one more. Right on. That's right. I mean, it, it isn't a Wednesday without without uh, fellowship and without the breaking of bread. Uh, it just wasn't the same sitting there wearing our masks and you know, it's a lot more fun to to break bread together. Yes, sir. Yes, come on. I thought somebody was going to say it. Uh, I almost thought we were going to end up in a in an unending drought, but we've been blessed. 
That's right, the, the deer are grateful for that winter wheat somebody accidentally planted right across the street from their house, I noticed. <laughs> Uh, other, other, uh, any others once, twice for, for joys? Um, and, and Lynn mentioned uh, Lynn Penn, but, but what concerns do we have as we pray uh, for our church and community and our neighbors? For Grandpa, all right, prayers for, for Grandpa. Uh, other prayers that you want to lift this morning? Wow. Can you say even maybe a first name? Can you spell the last name? For the Opitz family and for a diagnosis uh, uh, and a traveling mercies to, to California for, 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 for working with doctors. Yes, girls? For your stepdad? Okay. Same? Okay. Tell us, Paula. Prayers for Linda Barnett with heart issues. And again, if you're worshiping on the stream this morning or throughout the week, if you have prayers you want to comment or, or just message us on there directly, we'll, we'll, we'll share in your prayers. Um, others that you may have, uh, other uh, concerns to lift this morning. Prayers for Miss Betty Bragg and, and in hopes of a biopsy coming. Right. Okay, prayers for Betty B. Uh, others that you want to lift this morning. Uh, I'll lift one. Uh, I, I know a number of us have had on our prayer list, and I, and I don't have an update uh, for this morning, but to continue to pray for Mike Eason. Uh, Mike uh, had been taking care of some of our church grounds um, and is in the hospital and on a ventilator and is, and is yet to be responsive. And so we want to continue to lift prayers uh, for Mr. Mike Eason. Again, continued prayers for Zach Bradley and for Coy Hartzell. If I remember, there was an accident uh, and one family suffering a, a loss uh, of a young person and the, and the other uh, recovering from severe injuries. Uh, others that you want to lift this morning? Prayers for, for Sherry Wilchman's stepdad and prayers for Sherry and Randall as they uh, return home from, from Atlanta. Yes, sir. Tell me. I've got a, a concern and a place. My niece and nephew from Clarendon both had COVID. They took the pills our way. They're doing really good. Okay. They're staying in, but they are better. Did tell us, can you tell us even their first name? Donna and Jimmy. For Don and, Donna, Donna and Jimmy. Donna and Jimmy. For Donna and Jimmy in recovery uh, from, from COVID. Uh, others that you want to lift in prayer this morning? Well, let's come to rest just for, for a quiet moment. Um, Lord Jesus, indeed, you have the whole world uh, in your hands. Our communities, uh, our church, and, and even our very lives. And we thank you, God, for, uh, for the gift of your mercies and, and your grace at work in the world. We thank you for your strength and protection and, and provision. We thank you that, that you hear us uh, and are more ready to hear often than we are to, to pray. Unsure at times even of, of what to say. But God, we know that, that your will uh, will be done. And so we, we simply pray uh, as you teach us to live. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want to ask uh, the ushers to come forward as we uh, prepare to share um, in the giving of, of offerings uh, and to invite you as well, uh, if you're here in worship, to remember that there's a prayer card on your uh, bulletin uh, that you may want to make a mark for, for a need of prayer. Uh, it can be shared with the prayer chain if you mark it on the card, or perhaps you may have a confidential prayer um, if you'll mark that on the card. The ushers will see that I receive your prayer uh, to pray with you and to, and to pray for you this week. Um, but let us uh, pray over uh, all that God gives. God, we thank you for the many gifts you give, for the many blessings we receive. And God, we ask that you bless the gift and the giver, that you bless the prayer and, the, and those who ask. Uh, that, that you bless, God, all of uh, our efforts uh, for the life of your kingdom uh, in this community uh, where we grow in our faith together and we glorify you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you very much.
encourage you all please stand and join us in the doxology. off and left my Bible over there. After journeying through most of the summer uh, through the gospel of Luke in the life and, and teachings of Jesus, uh, following him here and there and everywhere, uh, from the home of, of Mary and Martha to, to the home of Zacchaeus from the sycamore tree, in the villages, in the waysides, in the highways and byways, in the telling of the stories of the Good Samaritan, we find ourselves now with Jesus just before his arrest and the prayer which he offers for disciples in the whole world. We read this morning from the Gospel of John in the 17th chapter, from John 17 verses 20 through 26. Uh, I'll be sharing this morning from the New Living Translation uh, of God's Word from John 20, 17 uh, through 26. If you want to make a note for later or take a look now, again, we read from John this morning, uh, 17, 20 through 26. I am praying not only for these disciples but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And may they be in us so that the world will believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me so that they may be one as we are one. I am in them and you are in me. And may they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. Father, I want these whom you have given me to be with me where I am. And then they can see all the glory you gave me because you loved me even before the world began. O oh, righteous Father, the world doesn't know you, but I do. And these disciples know you sent me. I have revealed you to them, and I will continue to do so. And then your love for me will be in them, and I will be in them. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. It's one of the most awesome prayers to me um, in all of the Bible. Uh, you might nudge somebody next to them and, and let them know, uh, God loves me, right? You could tell somebody that. God, God loves me. And, 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 you know, if you've nudged them awake and, and they said, what? You could tell them, and God loves you, right? God loves me and, and God loves you. The truth is, you know, you could nudge them both if they're on two sides of you and even suggest the idea that, that God, you know, loves us all. All of us. Not, not just uh, some of us, a few of us, many of us. You know, you can think perhaps uh, for a moment about the twelve with whom he has just gathered and, and shared from the table after washing their feet and, and telling them of the heavenly place where he would be going and instructing them in, in some ways. I, I wonder how he would have said it, I, I, I imagine, in Hebrew, but, but when he kind of let them know, uh, you fellas are fixing to uh, take this to the whole world. They said, what? <laughs> right? Jesus uh, expresses his love for them all. The betrayer and, and the den denier too. And in this simple uh, prayer, 
in these uh, few words, in this handful of verses, he expresses as his time on the earth in his body and in his life is running out. His prayer for, not just for all of them of the twelve, not just for, for those who are walking uh, with him and, and struggling even at times to stay awake, to stay on track or focused, but his prayer for all, the Bible says, who would ever receive this message. And that includes all of us. It's a prayer of, of Christian unity. The prayer of Jesus for all of the disciples that the world will ever make. For every person that will ever be called out from a troubled world to believe in Jesus Christ. And in the message of his life and death and resurrection for the forgiveness of, of all sin. It's a simple prayer that they will be one. I've thought a lot about this uh, prayer uh, uh, over the last few weeks, uh, especially even the last couple of weeks as I have uh, been praying for, for schools in particular. Uh, praying by name for, for schools here in our community, praying for, for educators and faculty and staff, some by name that I know and, and have requested or asked for, for prayers. Praying uh, for, for schools across the country and, and around the world. Continuing as I have for many months in, in flashbulb moments too, praying for, for conflict in Eastern Europe and the Ukraine and, and praying for people whose names I may never know. But for a couple of weeks now in a, in a troubled world, in a divided nation, in a splintering church even it seems, to pray the prayer of Christian unity that all would be one. Now, I can remember uh, sometimes uh, experiencing people that were a little out there. Uh, as a kid, uh, I remember meeting a fellow once called Crazy Ray. Now, I don't think that was the name on his birth certificate, but, but most people who, who watched uh, the Cowboys on TV in the 70s and the 80s probably heard of Crazy Ray. Does anybody here know who that is? Crazy Ray was this super fan, uh, African-American gentleman from Texas, and he had the big, you know, 30-gallon hat and, and chaps and vests and all this, and he would uh, walk up and down on the railing in the stadium and yell, you know, and, and be an unofficial cheerleader and say, how about them, cowboy? And Crazy Ray was crazy, you know? Uh, I mean, again, I, don't have me jump up on this chancel and fall and, and, and then have an orthopedist bill, uh, but, but he was crazy. Uh, and I can remember as a kid going to the game at Thanksgiving, I think they were playing the Cleveland Browns. I forget. I've got a couple of the programs when I saw them play the once upon a time uh, uh, St. Louis Cardinals and, and so forth. But, but I remember seeing Crazy Ray and, and walking on the railing and hollering and all this kind of thing. And I can remember my dad said, you know, some folks are just a little different, Right. Now, you might, you know, have seen some folks in your time. I, I can remember we went to a Razorbacks game one time, and, and there was a fellow that, that had made a, a beer can out of, a, a, a mimicked Budweiser beer can out of some kind of cardboard contraption, you know, like a 50-gallon drum. And he decorated it all up, and it had two shoulder straps on it, and he was wearing no shirt, and it was like November, and it was cold and raining. I remember sitting in the station wagon, you know, thinking, are we really going to go in and watch this game? Or are we going to sit out here and listen on the radio? And, and we went in anyway. And here was this fellow with no shirt with this giant beer can, uh, uh, you know, I don't know what to call it, a dress. Uh, and, and he had one of those plastic hog hats on. And every now and again, he'd start hollering, you know what, right? That's where you say woo pig, so he'd go hollering, right? he hollering something good now. And I think, you know, some folks are just different, right? Here's another one, uh, you know, you could call it a, a country saying, it takes all kinds. <laughs> one look right here and you know it's the gospel truth, it takes all kinds, am I right? It takes all kinds, and some folks are different. You could nudge your neighbor this morning even and probably think, bless his heart, right? <laughs> right? 
It takes all kinds. Some folks are different, and then you can have that closing prayer. Bless his heart, right? Jesus has people everywhere. You go to a football game and somebody's going to remind you of the verse that comes between John 15 and 17. Am I right? It takes all kinds. Some folks are different. Bless their heart. And Jesus has people everywhere. Uh, a friend of mine here in our community is a, an educator at Bryant and, and drives a, a school bus too. And, and I think about him and pray for him uh, often uh, as I pray for others. And I think about just that, that, that God has people here and there and everywhere. That's a lot to get your head around, the whole world, Miss Kath. That's a lot to get your hands around. Uh, you know, some of our hands aren't quite big enough to get all the way around even that little globe. But to think that Jesus has a prayer of unity that covers the whole world. There's an opportunity to, to grow in our trust when we pray and we read these few verses and we pray uh, with an open mind and an open heart. We pray this simple prayer that the church of God in Christ would be one. It doesn't all mean we have the same favorite hymn. I read a story about uh, a, a church where uh, a different arrangement of the old rugged cross was played on a Sunday. And a lady who first uh, quit the choir, said, just got up and got down from the choir loft. You know, she's not singing that version. Um, and, and by the middle of the week, she made her mind up she was going to visit another church and, 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 and so forth. It doesn't mean we all have to root for the same team. Uh, Joe Simmons, some of us get to be Georgia fans, all right, in the good days, uh, and maybe in the bad too. It doesn't all mean that, 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 we, uh, that we have the same favorite song. It doesn't all mean that we choose the, the same piece of chicken in the line at the church dinner. But it does mean that we all have the same Savior. It does mean that the atonement of all human sin in the history of the world was defeated on the cross of Jesus Christ. It does mean that. I was reading about a lady that is an elementary school teacher and, and uh, blogging about some things the first uh, couple of weeks in school. And, and when the kids all uh, came back the first week and they were uh, giddy and excited to, to get to know each other and, and their teacher and, and, and to catch up with one another. And they were kind of so busy, uh, teachers. And, and I know few of you ever have experienced this, but some of them were so busy, it was hard for them to focus. And she said, I know y'all are all excited, but I'll tell you what, let's, let's work on, you know, this and work on that. And you keep in mind all the exciting things you did this summer. And you talk about it at home. And on Friday, everybody brings something from your summer to tell about your summer. And we'll all have share before lunchtime. And so Friday came, and, and, and everybody had a chance. They were eager. They were all excited. You know, one of the girls uh, had, had brought her a glove, and, and uh, I picked up the wrong hand because she was a, a left-handed first baseman like they're all supposed to be. And, and she said, uh, that, well, this is my softball glove. And, and all summer I played softball, and we went to here and there and everywhere, and everybody thought that was good and interesting. Uh, and there was a kid who had some goggles and, and told everybody how much he loved to swim uh, and, and all of that. Um, you know, and, and there was a, a kid there that, that, that had this little piece of metal, and they said, what is that? He said, well, uh, that, that is a, 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 a stake for our tent. And he said, now I wanted to bring a ladder uh, for our campfire, but my mom said I couldn't, so I brought this uh, tent stake. And so everybody went to lunch and all the things happened on Friday as they do and the weekend went by and there was another week of school and the kids were still kind of busy and excited about all the things they were doing and, and making friends. And she gave them a second assignment and said, I want you guys to think about and talk about it at home at the supper table about your family and all of that. And on Friday, bring something that, that represents your family to, to share with the class. And so Friday came, uh, and little by little throughout the morning, she would call the students up to share 
uh, something about their lives and, and their families and the, the people that they are and the families they represent. And, and so one uh, little kid came forward and, and showed the class a dream catcher. Uh, that belonged to uh, his uh, dad and, and that it hung on the rearview mirror in his truck. And he told the class how his dad uh, is Cherokee Indian and their family's Native American. And, and the class thought it was very interesting. Um, and then there happened to be a, 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 a little gal in the class um, that came forward and she had a little candle. And she told the class how her family was Jewish. And on the Sabbath, that they would light a candle uh, in the evening when it was supper time and, and eat supper at the meal and, and, and shared a little about that. Uh, then there was a, another kid who came forward and, and held up a little rosary that belonged to his mom and talked about how they were Catholic uh, and that they went to church uh, for Mass and they would have, uh, you know, a wafer and juice. And, and he was learning uh, about the rosary. And so, uh, finally, uh, as the class all went through, one of the kids uh, was called up, and it was just about to be lunchtime. Um, and he walked up, and he had his lunchbox. And the teacher said, well, tell us, you know, what, what does your lunchbox tell us about your family? And he said, well, uh, my family, uh, we're Methodists. And I brought a roll and a chicken leg from our Wednesday night potluck for lunch today as leftovers. That one will get you on the way home. Some of you aren't Methodist enough in your mind to remember that, that we have potlucks uh, and, and fellowship dinners. Jesus prays a simple prayer. He offers a simple and powerful prayer for the whole world and for every person of faith that we will be uh, united in, in our perfect love of God and, and neighbor. At times, it's, it's easy to, to get away from that prayer. It's easy, perhaps, to, to get focused on the disunity of the country, uh, of the classroom, uh, maybe even of, of people with whom you share the same last name. It's easy, probably, at times, to get caught up in the division that the devil would sow uh, in our minds and in our very lives. And so it's important to be reminded now and again of the prayer of Jesus for perfect unity. That God in His wisdom has people everywhere. You may have clicked through the, the TV yesterday and, and seen some, some crazy folk from, from all over the country with, with their faces painted red or blue or green. I went to eat breakfast yesterday and, and I noticed a family walked in the door and every one of them was decked out like the Pope would want them to be in navy blue and gold. They had all the, there were two little boys and their daddy and they all had a hat that said N.D., Right? I saw a, a little family come in and two little girls with the Razorback stickers on their ch little cheeks and one of them had the cheerleader uniform and I thought to myself, it takes all kinds, don't it? It takes all kinds. God has a prayer for all kinds of folks. God has a plan and a purpose in eternity for all of them too. And a simple table where he invites us all to share in the hope of the feast of the Lamb. I'll invite you, um, if you have a, a hymnal handy, uh, to, to reach for it now. Uh, no need if, if it's not there. I know we're working to put out our, uh, our new uh, commemorative Bibles and hymnals in, in the pews. If you're home and you don't happen to have one, no worries. But uh, if you would like to, we'll share in a simple uh, part of the shortest communion liturgy in the Bible, I mean in the hymnal. Uh, it, it starts on page 15 at the bottom. And we share in what we call the great thanksgiving as we prepare uh, to share from this table. The Lord be with you. And lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And we remember as well that God who formed the earth, who parted even the seas, sent Jesus the Christ to suffer, die, and rise for all of our sins. 
And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and we join their hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You remember that as Jesus had had gathered with the disciples and had spoken to them of the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of heaven upon the earth, of the message of the gospel uh, to go into all of the world and the salvation of, of humankind, that, that in this gathering at the table, that, that he took a, a loaf of bread and a cup of, of juice. That he lifted the cup from the table and said, Thanks be to you, O Lord, our God. For you alone have created the heavens and the earth. You alone bring rain to our fields and fruit to the vine and grain for the table. And he offered the cup to all of them gathered there and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant. It's poured out for you and for many more for the forgiveness of sins. So do this as often as you will in remembrance of me. As they began to share in this simple of supper, which would be their feast, he also took a loaf of bread and raised it from the table, saying, Thanks be to you, O God, our Father. And then he prayed a new prayer, saying, Thanks be to you, O God, who has made me to take away the sins of the world. And then he broke the bread, and he offered it to them and said, Take, eat, all of you. This is my body. It's given for you and for many more, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And so it is that in remembrance of these mighty acts of worship in Jesus Christ, that we offer ourselves in praise and in thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. And together, we proclaim the mystery of faith, that Christ has died, that Christ is risen, and that Christ will come again. And so we pray that all honor and glory would be yours, Almighty Father, in the power of your Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus, now and forever. Amen. I want to ask um, uh, Joel, if he would, to, to come uh, with me. Uh, and we're going to serve the, the chancel first. Invite you if you're home or, or, or on the road, wherever you may be. Of course, if you're on the road, pull over. But campsite, wherever you may be, to, to gather uh, the elements that you may share. Uh, if you're watching even on the stream or through the week and, and thought to share in communion with a neighbor, a friend, a family member, someone uh, shut in uh, to, to gather uh, whatever you might have um, to share. Um, this morning, we'll serve the, the chancel first to, to invite the, the praise team to come. Uh, and then we'll invite uh, the body to come forward uh, down the side aisles uh, to receive uh, of the bread and the cup. Uh, to spend a moment, if you would like, at the chancel praying or kneeling, how, however you might be comfortable, uh, and, and to return to your seats. If there is anyone here uh, that wishes uh, just to remain in your seat, uh, once the body has, has come forward, we'll come and serve you in your seat um, that everyone may receive from the first to the last and the, and the last to the first. Thank you, sir.
and let the church say. Having been invited to share in the fellowship of the table, we are soon invited to go and be witnesses in the world. Our hymn of praise is, Bless be the tie that binds. May we stand and sing together, Bless be the tie that binds. Just a word about next Sunday. We hope you will join us in person and online as we, uh, as we share uh, on September the 11th. Uh, many of you may remember uh, where you were the day uh, that you got the news, that you heard the word, uh, that the world uh, seemed to be falling apart. Next Sunday, we will both remember uh, and celebrate uh, the lives uh, of many in our country. Uh, and we will share in God's Word uh, about His plan and purpose and work uh, in the world. And so we hope you will join uh, with us for a special Sunday, uh, Where Were You? Uh, next Sunday, uh, September the 11th. You may not have to look very far uh, to know uh, that some folks are a little different. Amen? Amen. And you don't have to look very far into the Gospels to discover that Jesus loves them all. This week we have an opportunity to continue in the great work of the Gospel to share the love of God with our neighbors uh, until one day Jesus comes uh, again. God bless you this week in the places you go, in the company you keep, in the things that you do. And blessed be the tie that binds. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen.